In this episode of Animal Academy, I'm at Australian Zoo, right on crop feeding time. Charlie's got a classic case of dog breath. Jeff checks him out. And we meet Craig Shepherd, a man who's doing good deeds for ducks. Hi, I'm Jeremy Maguire. And I'm Sarah Ulmer. And welcome to Animal Academy. With us today we've got Hamish, who is a seven and a half year old Airedale Terrier. Now Airedales were originally bred as working dogs, but they've had heaps of different jobs from hunting dogs to police dogs. They were even used in the First World War to carry mail and messages behind enemy lines. Amazing stuff. Now our first story today is about a man with a very unusual job. He talks to animals and they talk back. Many people make a career out of working with horses. Bill Northern is an animal communicator. His specialty is identifying problems with horses. We can pick up things probably 10 days to two weeks before the vets can see it with anything they have. They, they just, you know, the horse will tell you it hurts. He trained in Virginia, USA, and has practiced animal communication since 1994. Bill works in New Zealand six months of the year, visiting his clients. Go ask him if he has a problem with his mouth and you can see the pendulum going, no. And they will ask him if he has a problem in his neck and you can see as we get right here that he's got a bit of a problem in his neck and feel a little knot in there. There are many ways to program a pendulum, but mine is programmed but as simply as you can do it. This is a search position back and forth, okay. If I ask a question, I get a no answer, it goes counterclockwise like that. Then I ask a yes, and it goes clockwise like that. And I can tell how bad the pain is by how fast the pendulum swings. Today, he's seen Angie and her horse Ned again for a general checkup, using his pendulum to learn any new information. And when we get down right here, we kind of pick up a little bit of pain right through there. As you could probably see from the pendulum, it's not too bad. Okay, now this is interesting. We've got a problem right up here in this weather. You can see the pendulum is sort of going crazy when we come down here. All right, it seems this is coming. Bill also uses right telepathy there. and touch to communicate with the animals. Right there. Okay. You know, when he's competing, he gets really tense when he jumps. He plays around bucking. The reason he's doing that, he's, he thinks you really like that. You're sort of a daredevil. Yeah, you I know, don't mind. I don't yeah, mind. You, you're sort of a daredevil, so you don't worry about stuff like that. He thinks you can't like it. Yeah, I didn't know why he, he um, played around so much in the ring. Um, so that was quite interesting to find out um, that he thinks that I enjoy it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but no, the leg, that was really interesting. He's bang on there. And, I mean, he can't see. I mean, he's got boots on his legs. Hi, Miss Rose. I'm Bill Northern. Hi. Bill is seeing Rose and her horse Barbie for the Barbie. first time. Hi, Miss Barbie. Hi. Sometimes his diagnosis and remedies are not always the expected. May I ask you to do me a favour? Sure. I'd like for you to start feeding us some yogurt. Yogurt? Mm-hmm. Any particular flavour? Uh, most horses like strawberry, a strawberry banana. Can I ask why you suggested feeding her yogurt? Because I see a couple red spots that could be ulcers coming. Right. And yogurt will kind of take care of that for. I don't think there'd be very many uh, standard bred uh, racehorse trainers that would feed their horses strawberry yogurt. Um, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe they do, and I don't know about it. Some of his more exotic clients are the zebra herd at Arana Park. Keeper Ian Adams is hoping Bill can say why these striped beauties are not breeding. You've got a virile young stallion with three young ladies, well, middle aged ladies that are all hot to trot and um, there's no action that we see. Bill starts oh, to tune his gee. thoughts into those of the stallion. Let me make sure I'm going to tell you right here. When, do you ever get him sort of in a cattle pen or something like we put cattle or sheep in? No. Okay. The reason I'm saying that is he's showing me something wrong right in this groin area on his right side. Mm -hmm. He's been kicked and he doesn't want to be kicked again. You, you have to ask them not to kick him. Mm -hmm. Just ask him, just like you were a little child, yep. say, please don't kick him. 
Mm. So the easiest thing for us is just to get them up close and um, see what we can see if there is anything obvious looking. It's, it's always good to hear another opinion. Bill enjoys his work communicating with the animals, convinced that with an open mind, all questions can be answered for the owners. They have to be willing to look outside the box for something. And that's what people have to do. They have to realise it's a lot going on in this world that you don't see with your physical eyes. A lot going on. Well, it looks like there's plenty of work there to keep Bill busy, and hopefully we'll see baby zebra running around soon. Well, I wonder if Bill's ever spoken to ducks. Well, Craig Shepherd is all about ducks, especially our native brown teal. Craig Shepherd, sharp-eyed security man by day, doting duck man by night. Some people have horses, I have ducks. Craig's love for ducks started eight years ago. When we were building our house, there was a duckling that was brought to me and it had a leg ripped off. Met somebody who did bird rehab and it started from there and then my partner Julie, um, unwisely she would say now, bought me half a dozen ducks and ducks breed apparently. <laughs> and. Uh, this is what's happened. Every night at five o'clock, it's feeding time for hundreds of Craig's adopted family members. I call it supplementary feeding. They'll congregate over here and sit and wait for the food. Over the years, from the original six, Craig's duck operation has expanded to hundreds. This is our main aviary. The majority of these will get released or be rehomed to people who've got ponds and bits and pieces, and there's probably half a dozen that'll live in here for the rest of their life for various reasons. Craig has turned his garage, which used to be filled with the usual tools and bits and pieces, into a high-tech duck hospital, where he spends several hours a day nursing his ducks. 1,670-odd grams. Good girl. As much as Craig loves his ducks, the reason for rehabilitating them is so he can release them back into the wild. This is Blondie. She had been brutally attacked by other ducks when Gary rescued her. She's the picture of health now. I mean, that's the result that you're always aiming for, is a bird back out into the wild in as near perfect condition as possible. Uh, this is the maternity wing. It's a caging set up for mums and their ducklings. And it's also a halfway house for uh, ducks when they're coming out from the hospital wing out to the main aviary. So it's a way of getting them acclimatised, so they can have anything up to probably 100 birds in here in peak season. And this is cleaned twice a day, which is uh, just one of the little tasks that I look forward to every morning and every night. Sucks up a bit of time, but it's part of the process. Craig's real passion is for a very rare bird, which he takes great pleasure in raising. These are brown teal. They're the second rarest duck in New Zealand. There's about two and a half thousand of them alive. There used to be millions of them, literally. They're um, very hard to breed. I've had two pair here for two years and just a couple of months ago managed to get four offspring out of this couple, which is a really nice result. Despite what you've seen here, these are actually quite a nocturnal bird and you would not normally see them at all. And the camera up here is an infrared camera so I can actually have a look and observe their behaviour at night and I have used it to in fact ensure that these guys are still alive every day. The reward for me is seeing something that I've done that'll live past me. It'll be something that'll future generations in New Zealanders we'll be able to see brown teal hopefully in the natural habitat because people like myself have had the opportunity and the privilege to breed brown teal. I really had no involvement with animals prior to moving out here but certainly you know would never have harmed an animal or have condoned any cruel treatment but didn't really get the, the pet thing or the animal thing and uh, it's taught me a lot about animals, it's given me a bit more compassion and a bit of empathy that some may have said I didn't have previously. They do have pain and they have, you know, they mourn their mates when they're gone. So um, pretty interesting, it's taught me a lot. After the break, if your dog has bad breath, our vet Jeff has got some advice for you. <laughs> 